Today we're asking you to describe your sexuality using some diagrams from sexual configurations theory. Something that might be important to your sexuality is the gender of the partners you're interested in. When people talk about gender, they usually mean whether someone is male or female, but gender can mean all sorts of things. Everyday use of the word gender might include how someone feels, what clothes they wear, what sex they were assigned at birth, how their body is shaped, and many more characteristics. So we think it'd be better to be a little bit more specific about what we mean by gender. We use gender to mean characteristics related to masculinity, femininity, and gender diversity. This refers to socialized, cultural, or learned characteristics that may relate to a person's culture, their roles, their beliefs, or things they like to do. Some examples of gender characteristics might be clothing, behavior, or how someone presents or expresses themselves, but it's up to you what you think goes here. Some identity labels related to gender could be feminine, masculine, or genderqueer, among others. But what about bodily characteristics that are associated with maleness, femaleness, and sex diversity? We use the term sex for those features. These are typically understood as biological, bodily, physical, and or innate, inborn, but not everyone agrees on this. Sex may also refer to someone's internal sense of their own sex, others' beliefs about their sex, and so on. Some examples of sex characteristics might be vulvas, penises, breasts, body shape, facial hair, or the pitch of someone's voice. But again, it's up to you what you think goes here. Some identity labels related to sex could be male, female, transgender, or intersex, among others. But wait, there are some characteristics that might not easily fall into either gender or sex. For example, people's whole identities might be both gender and sex. Groups like women's book clubs are often organized around gender sex. Anyone who identifies as a woman can participate. The same goes for groups like men's choirs. Some other examples of gender sex characteristics could be what pronouns someone uses for themselves or the way they see themselves as a whole person. Some identity labels related to gender sex could be woman, trans man, or non-binary, among others. You can also think about gender sex as meaning gender and or sex. That is, if either gender or sex completely describes the partners you're interested in, the gender sex diagram might look the same as these other components. So the diagrams can be used to describe the gender, sex, or gender sex of the partners you might be interested in. When we say partners, we mean anyone you might have a sexual and or romantic relationship with. Some examples of the people you might think would be casual hookups, significant others, spouses, or romantic partners. There's room on these diagrams to represent past partners, current partners, and even potential or future partners. In sexual configurations theory, there are actually two components to thinking about partners, eroticism and nurturance. Eroticism refers to parts of sexuality related to bodily pleasure, orgasm, arousal, tantalization, and related concepts. So gender sex eroticism is about the gender sex of partners that you're interested in being erotic with. Nurturance deals with aspects of sexuality tied to warm, loving feelings and closeness. So gender sex nurturance is about the gender sex of partners you're interested in being nurturant with. You can think of eroticism as lust or being sexual and nurturance as love or being romantic. We use eroticism and nurturance because these terms don't imply the same level of intensity or commitment as lust and love. One more thing about eroticism and nurturance is that they may occur together in a given situation, but they may also occur separately or there may be no eroticism or nurturance. Okay, now that we've gone over some terms, let's get to the diagrams you'll be using in this study. This is the gender sex sexuality diagram. It may look complicated at first, but we'll give you plenty of examples of how people might use it. It's important to remember that there's no one way of being interested or not in partners that is more right or legitimate than another. So however you use the diagrams is the right way. Now we're ready to start with some examples. Hi, my name is Blake. I identify as a lesbian, and I prefer to have sexual partners that are women. This diagram is asking about gender sex eroticism, so I'll put a dot on the outside ring right at women to represent that I'm interested specifically in women. This outside ring is called the binary ring. It represents a continuum or a spectrum from women to men. For me, I find that the people that I want to be erotic with are also the people that I want to have nurturing connections with too. So, for the gender sex nurturance diagram, I put my mark in the same location, right at women. Hi, I'm Mika. Like Blake, I'm interested in having women as sexual partners. 
I'm also interested in women who have characteristics that other people might usually associate more with men, like being dominant or dressing in masculine clothing. I could put a mark right at women, but instead I shaded near the women's side of the area between women and men. This space is called the challenge area, which can represent people perceived as challenging traditional expectations for women and men. So I shaded here to represent the broad range of women that I'm interested in having erotic relationships with. When it comes to nurturant relationships, I prefer to have partners who are women, but I'm also open to nurturing romantic relationships with men from time to time. For me, the gender sex of the partners that I want to experience nurturance with are sometimes different from those that I want to have erotic relationships with. To indicate this, I put a mark on the binary ring toward both gender sexes, but still closer to women. Hi, my name is Sam. I identify as queer. I'm sexually attracted to men, but mostly femme-identified men. Since I think that being a femme man challenges society's views of gender sex, I put my mark in the challenge area too, close to the men's side. Since this is the type of person I'm usually interested in, I'll write orientation next to that dot. See those vertical dotted lines? Those are the norm boundaries. They represent whatever your culture sees as the boundaries of who counts as a man or woman. Crossing this boundary places your mark in the challenge area. Great, thanks for explaining those. There are just a couple more parts to this diagram to check out. In the middle of the diagram, we have the non-binary area. This is a space for you to mark interest in partners who may not identify or be perceived as either men or women. At the very center of the circle is openness to partners of any gender sex. So the closer you get to the middle, the closer you get to being interested in all gender sexes. Let's look at some examples of how people might use the non-binary area. Hi, Sam here again. Remember how I said I was mainly interested in femme men? Well, right now I'm in an erotic relationship with someone who identifies as non-binary. They are a little more masculine, so I'll put another dot in the non-binary area, a little closer to the men's side. I also marked my relationship by writing current partner. This represents my status, or who I am currently in a relationship with. This may or may not be the same as my orientation, and that's okay. Thanks! As you can see, there are a lot of ways to indicate your interest in erotic and or nurturant partners. And people with the same labels, like lesbian, might represent their interest differently, and that's okay. People with different labels, like pansexual and gay, might locate their interests in similar ways, and that's okay too. There's no right way to use the diagrams. You may be thinking that a lot of these examples are too complex or not relevant to your own sexuality, and that's okay. Some people may need this complexity to describe their sexuality, but other people may find that they only need a few pieces of the diagrams or that their diagrams all look the same. There's actually something else to consider here. In addition to the gender sexes of partners you're interested in, there's also a strength component to indicate how important your gender sex locations are when choosing erotic and nurturant partners. The strength dimension is what makes this a 3D diagram. See how the diagram gets smaller as strength decreases? This might help you think about what the strength dimension means. The lower the strength, the less space gender sex takes up in your sexuality. As you can see, at 0% the diagram disappears altogether, meaning that a partner's gender sex is not important at all in your erotic or nurturant relationships. This is Blake again. Like I mentioned earlier, I prefer to have sexual partners who are women. In my erotic relationships, it's really important to me that my partners identify as women, so I'm going to mark my gender sex eroticism strength at 100%. In my nurturant relationships, gender sex is less important to me when choosing a partner. Gender sex is partially how I choose partners for nurturant relationships, but other aspects of a partner's personality, like their sense of humor, are even more important to me. To show this, I'm going to mark this strength at 40%. Hi again. Hmm, when I consider who I want to be nurturant with, I don't think gender sex plays a role at all. I just really see who I vibe with on an emotional level, and that could be someone of any gender sex. To represent this, I'll place a dot at the bottom of the diagram, right at non-gendered sex. This means I'm at 0% strength for this component. So now we know the different pieces of the gender sex diagram. But gender sex isn't the only component we're interested in. Remember gender and sex? We're also going to ask you about those. First, let's go over the gender diagram. Remember, we use gender to mean characteristics related to masculinity, femininity, and gender diversity. This diagram is very similar to the gender sex diagram, but instead of woman, man, and gender sex, this diagram will include the terms masculine, feminine, and gender. Let's see how some folks might use this diagram. Hi, my name is Riley. I'm interested in erotic relationships with feminine-leaning people of all kinds. 
including people with non-binary identities. To show this, I put a mark in the feminine side of the non-binary area, close to all genders. In the past, I was only interested in erotic relationships with feminine men, and I think the change in my interests is an important part of my sexuality, so I decided to make another mark in the challenge area, near feminine, and label it as past orientation. I'll mark it 80% strength for my past orientation and 60% strength for my current orientation, since gender has become less important to me over time. This is also a good time to bring up another feature of the diagrams. See these blue lines? These lines represent how specific your interests are. The mark for my past is near the most specific area. This makes sense to me because I was particularly interested in having feminine men as partners. Because I'm currently open to being erotic with people of a lot of different genders, my current mark is near the area of least specificity. These lines are here to help make sense of the diagram, but no need to pay attention to them if they don't help. The last diagram will be the sex diagram. Remember, we use sex to mean bodily characteristics that are associated with maleness, femaleness, and sex diversity. So instead of masculine, feminine, and gender, this diagram will include the terms male, female, and sex. Let's see how some of the people we met before might use this diagram. Hi there, my name is Lana. In my erotic relationships, I prefer to be with partners who have bodily features like facial hair, bigger muscles, and a deep voice, which I consider male characteristics but I'm also open to erotic relationships with people who don't have all those physical characteristics. So I put a dot at male and shaded an area that goes a bit towards female. My partner's physical characteristics in terms of sex are pretty important to me, but since I'm also open to a range of physical characteristics, I'm going to mark sex eroticism strength at 80%. In my nurturant relationships, I'm equally interested in people with female and male characteristics. And I'm also interested in people who challenge sex norms. I mark the middle of the binary ring to show that I'm equally interested in nurturant relationships with people who have male or female characteristics. And I shaded the challenge area to indicate my interest in nurturance with people who challenge sex norms. For nurturant relationships, sex isn't very important to my attractions, so I marked strength at 30%. And that's it. We've gone through all the diagrams we're asking you to fill out. Now it's your turn. As you saw, there are plenty of different ways to use the diagrams and none of them are more right than any others. Just fill them out in whatever way makes the most sense to you. Remember, you can use individual dots, multiple dots, shade areas, or any combination of these. You can also write text to help explain your locations. And don't worry, there will be reminders of all of this when you're filling out the diagrams.